Welcome to this uh, talk on uh, our tool called Dependency Migration Assistant. And uh, thank you for inviting us to present at uh, SERI 2020. Uh, we are from IBM Research, uh, Bangalore, India. Uh, I am Dr. Giri Prasad Sridhara, and this is uh, a tool and a technique that we have developed uh, along with my colleagues uh, Utkarsh Desai and Dr. Amit Singhi. So the talk outline is broadly, I will motivate why we need a dependency migration assistant tool. What is the problem of dependencies? What is the notion of migration and so on? And then uh, give you an overview of the tool. And finally, I will do a, a, a quick uh, demo of the tool to show how it is working in practice. Uh, so the motivation is, uh, we, we all know developers, uh, we developers are strongly encouraged to reuse uh, code. Uh, even for uh, relatively simple operations, code reuse is uh, encouraged. Uh, code reuse uh, can take a variety of forms. For example, we can simply cop uh, refactor duplicated code, uh, extract code into methods, into classes, and so on. Or we can develop uh, our own internal libraries that can be used across a wide number of applications. Or we can use uh, code that has been developed by others, by other software developers. These are external libraries. One popular form of re uh, reuse is to use the external libraries. So these libraries, they can be developed within an organization or it can be from outside, which we will refer to as a third party library. Now, there are thousands of open source Java libraries on uh, Maven. Uh, I think we are all familiar with Maven. Maven is a central repository for uh, Java libraries. And uh, these numbers, these huge numbers, attest to the popularity of libraries and the notion of code uh, uh, reuse uh, via uh, uh, using via libraries. So even for routine tasks like uh, like looping, uh, it is recommended to use libraries as they can vectorize, run in parallel, and so on. I'll show I'll show an example later on uh, in this talk. Using libraries, basically, it can decrease the amount of code that a developer that we have to write. So lesser code, uh, fewer lines of code basically means that uh, there is lesser code to unit test, lesser code to maintain and so on. Basically, uh, decreased maintenance burden. And decreased maintenance burden leads to decreased costs of software development, essentially. So that is why its uh, developers are strongly encouraged to uh, reuse code and uh, especially use uh, good libraries wherever they are possible. So I'll move to a concrete example that uh, shows the use of libraries. This is an example that I have taken from uh, Coursera. Uh, what this does, example does, is it illustrates the benefits of using a library even for a simple operation such as a, a dot product. Conventional looping is far, far slower than the NumPy library API dot. So here, this is a Python example. What Essentially, what we are doing is uh, we are initializing two arrays, A and B, uh, to have about a million elements. And we are computing the dot product between A and B using the NumPy library's dot operation and timing this operation. This is uh, this particular part of the code. And... Uh, after that, what we are doing is we are doing it in the conventional way, whereas we where we loop between one and one million, and for each C we uh, we add a C by taking A I times B I index into each of the arrays and do this a million times, and this is also timed. So as you can see, the the first version, which we call the vectorized version, because uh, the NumPy library dot operation is a vectorized implementation of this multiplication, it takes 1.5 milliseconds, whereas the for loop the for loop ends up taking 474 milliseconds. So that's approximately 474 by 1.5 is like about 400 or 450 times uh, slower. So the the library version is that much more faster, and this is one very good example of why uh, developers are strongly encouraged to use libraries. Even for a normal operation, a very easy operation like uh, computing the dot product, which is typically you would use it in, say, uh, linear regression and so on, linear regression, logistic regression to compute the uh, theta x or w x uh, matrices. These uh, uh, operations, the, these simple operations itself are highly uh, made 
uh, more efficient by using uh, libraries. And so the motivation thus libraries are needed and used. So uh, for complex operations like back propagation in deep neural networks, there's really no other choice because impl implementing them all the differential equations, the ECOBNs and so on, that is very tedious and it is error prone as we all know. And so for complex operations, there's really no choice and we are strongly encouraged to use libraries. Even for simple operations like dot product as I showed, libraries can provide efficiency and hence uh, uh, they are recommended to be used and actually used by developers in practice. So now what is the problem? Uh, I have motivated so far, I have said that libraries are very useful, developers are strongly encouraged to use them and the statistics uh, that there are thousands of libraries on Maven, uh, Java libraries that shows that people are actually using those libraries. So what, what is the problem? Like, the problem is that libraries like just any other piece of software, they too tend to evolve over time. So library code, for example, is often modified uh, to fix uh, any discovered bugs. There's a vast community of users and uh, they might discover bugs and report these bugs. So the code will have to be modified to fix these bugs. Library code is also often modified to add new APIs. Sometimes these may come as feature requests. Sometimes the de de library developers themselves can, say, uh, can feel the need for a new API and so on. So uh, library code uh, can modified to add new APIs. Certain times what happens is the developers, they go through the kind of do some housekeeping and then they realize certain APIs are uh, really unused or they're they are problematic, they're buggy or they're very somewhat dangerous. They can lead to some security problems and so on. So in such cases, what they do is they either remove them uh, or they typically first deprecate them and then remove them. So these APIs can, uh, can get removed as well. And then there are fixes for security issues and then also certain performance enhancements. Maybe an API is, but is slightly, there, there have been complaints that it is slow and so on. And so the developers may make a fix for this. So the library code, uh, just like any other piece of software also evolves over time. So now the problem is what happens when the libraries evolve? Now let's consider this uh, Google's uh, library called Gova. Gova is a set of uh, core uh, Java libraries and it includes a number of collection types which are not found in the basic uh, Java JDK such as multi-map, multi-set and uh, it has a graph library and uh, utilities for concurrency, IO, caching, hashing and so on and so forth. And it is used by more than 20,000, 24,000 other projects which attest to its popularity. But the interesting thing here is it has a staggering 75 releases since its first release in 2010. So in approximately 10 years, it has had 75 releases. So that means if, uh, it has stabilized recently, the, but nevertheless, on an average, uh, every few months there will be a, release, a new release of this uh, library. So what happens is every few months, if, if I am using uh, uh, this Gova in my project, as typically we tend to, since it's a, a popular and a very useful library providing a number of functions, what may happen is uh, I, the developers will have to check against this uh, new release. Uh, perhaps uh, an API that was being used by B has now been modified, it has been removed or it has been deprecated, in which case uh, if it's removed, uh, it will no longer compile. If it's modified, probably again it will not compile. Uh, if it's deprecated, eventually in a couple of releases down the road, it will be removed. So I'll have to again uh, make sure that I'm not using this and changing over to the latest suggested version and so on. So my code essentially needs to adapt to this uh, modified library. So this we call the uh, call it as code migration. My code needs to migrate to the latest version of the library, which means using the latest version of the library and also making associated changes in my code so that uh, it is compatible with the new latest or the newer version of the library. So we might say let uh, let us you know why uh, fix things if it's not broke. Uh, let us not uh, update to the new version of the library and uh, so on. But what happens is often we cannot skip migrating or updating to the newer version as this latest version might have some very important fixes done. So it may have fixes done uh, to resolve bugs, security issues, some critical security issues may be addressed, some important uh, 
performance bottlenecks may have been removed and the performance might have improved or all in all I, it, I cannot have a pick and choose kind of an option I cannot say just give me the bug fixes but I don't want your modified APIs and so on if yeah, I get the entire package so if I'm moving from my current version the latest version might have all these bug fixes security fixes performance issues resolved and so on but uh, the APS might also be modified so a project can typically use many such libraries typically we may have 20 to 30 but uh, often it can be as high as 50 so this is very tedious and this takes time so if you have to do this for one library itself every few months this is time consuming imagine doing this for 20 30 libraries repeatedly every month or you will end up uh, checking against latest libraries every few days so this is manual this is tedious and error so our solution is called dependency migration assistant and in dependency migration assistant is essentially a tool that automatically analyzes all the existing dependencies in a project all the jars that are used by the project and it is java based for now but it can be extended to other languages reasonably easily what it does is it can automatically convert the older lib folder based projects into maven and gradle these are not the main features but these are nice handy features that it has it can also automatically find and download the latest version for each jar that is used in the project now you may you may assume that finding the latest version is a trivial thing but it is not it is tedious to do manually and often difficult because a jar that is typically identified with a group id and artifact id might have those uh, missing so it's difficult so dma uses the concept of checksums to detect and download the latest version of a dependency once it does it it automatically migrates the project to the latest version of the jar and i'll show details of this in the next slide so here uh, we have our dependency migration assistant and uh, this is uh, basically there are three modules to it three portions to it one the first is the differencing module the second is the impact analysis module and the third is a fixed recommendation module uh, each of this works one after the other the differencing module what it primarily does is it takes two versions of a jar the current version that is used in my project and the latest version that is available on maven or some central repository it uses uh, both the jar and the java doc java docs are also released as jars uh, so it uses both these the, the the source jar the binary and the java doc jar and it does and it compares them using static program analysis and also does some text analysis uh, because this text and html parsing has to be done to analyze java docs so this difference module is application independent uh, we can run this offline on popular third party open source libraries like java for multiple version pairs and build a catalog of diffs so what it has is it has a schema definition to capture the diffs between any two versions of a library or a jar in a standardized way that is the output of this uh, uh, module and it has this as i mentioned static program analysis components and also text analysis and parsing modules to analyze uh, the java modules and the, the java doc so once the differencing module uh, analyzes two versions of a jar and finds all the differences that are there we now move, move on to the second module which is the impact analysis module now for a for a library let's say goa uh, let's say i'm using version 14 and the latest version happens to be version 27 there could be hundreds of changes that are uh, that are there between these two libraries but in my program it is not necessary that all those changes be present only a subset of them may be present and that is the impact analysis mod analysis modules job to find where uh, in code the call sites or the the changed apis are used so what this does is it takes this uh, the version diff that was prepared uh, that was produced by the difference module and it takes the application source code as well and what it does is it identifies the impact points where where all are the changed or the modified apis used in my code and it produces an impact analysis report json file uh, the, this is a different json from the version diff this is application specific so what it does is it will uh, once it finds out that okay the, maybe 100 apis have changed but in my in my program only 10 of those apis are used and they are probably used across uh, uh, 15 or 20 different call sites it will mark those points and pr put them in the report and it will classify the effort that is required to fix these as low medium or high based on certain rules 
Finally, we come to fixed recommendation module. The fixed recommendation module, what it does is it takes the impact analysis report where all in my code uh, the changes, uh, the change, the modified APIs have been used and which need to be fixed. It also takes the version diff, the original version diff from the first module and it takes the application source code or the application jar and recommends it, it actually generates fixes for those uh, which have been classified as low effort. So for medium and high effort, we might require more substantial changes. So uh, that is future work for us. But for fixes that we have categorized as uh, low effort, we automatically generate the code changes. What we also do is we also generate, uh, uh, we go to Stack Overflow, we do a Google query, go to Stack Overflow and find uh, some recommendations from Stack Overflow because typically developers tend to uh, go to Stack Overflow to look for solutions. Uh, so I will come to the sample output. In related work, there's not much work on directly examining Java doc and making suggestions and modifications like we are doing. So uh, I'll now move on to the demo. Uh, so this is uh, 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 for a project I, which I will show, uh, these are the dependencies. This is the current version 14 and the latest version 27. Now in practice, uh, DMA can actually download these automatically, but here I have downloaded, pre-downloaded to save time. And uh, here is uh, uh, my source code. What, uh, what this is essentially doing is this is a simple class and uh, this is broadly based on a sample that we have in our actual code, but uh, uh, so this is uh, uh, here in this line 20, we are this com Google common IO files, the two string method has been called with these two parameters. And if you look at the Java doc for this uh, two string, you will see that it has been marked as deprecated. And what the documentation is saying is prefer this other method called as car source taking this first parameter and the second parameter and then call another method called read. So this is a composition one API has been changed to a sequence of two APIs. Um, so we actually parse this one out. Uh, we we uh, we identify that this as car source and read are the two uh, APIs that that are going to replace two string. And we we find that this file and this car set uh, we have we have to be replaced by the actual parameters at the call side. So I I can now uh, uh, run my tool. I uh, uh, the tool is called dependency difference driver. And uh, it is. I have to specify the uh, uh, the source uh, and the latest version and the current version jars, and also the path of my application. So in practice, all of this is done automatically. The, the jars are downloaded. This driver is in, invoked automatically. And uh, when I run it now, it will. Uh, uh, it will process these first. It will find the differences between the modules. And it is processing the current version now. And it is comparing the diffs. And uh, now it So now it is iterating through all the files uh, and finding the impacted call sites. It has now gone to uh, and it has produced the output. So here we can see it. Uh, I started out with just four jars. It has created, it has enumerated all the APIs that are present in this jar and in this latest version. And it has also found all the differences between the latest version and the current version. And these are all, it is in JSON. 
and this is the output file the json but uh, for readability we, we will uh, uh, we have created a html out of this and uh, so this is the output so as you can see this is saying this particular api files to string which is in the main method of this class called dma simple demo on line 20 and we are saying the method has been deprecated. We saw in the documentation that the method is uh, deprecated. And uh, the fix effort is low because in this case, we have our rules determined that it can be fixed. Uh, uh, so this was a Java doc suggestion. It said uh, use these two combination of APIs with those parameters. And this is the important or the interesting part here. We have actually generated the patch. We, we can even uh, uh, modify your source code using AST rewrites and all that. But for now, we are uh, generating the patch this can be copy pasted by the developer as is so you can see this here this parameter i file and car car set which were the uh, local variables the actual variables corresponding to the uh, these uh, formal parameters file and car set they have been used so this is properly compilable code which can be copy pasted and we have also given certain stack overflow suggestions if uh, for instance if you are not satisfied with this generated patch you can go to stack overflow uh, where we have done a query on method deprecated and it will uh, it will tell you what fixes could be done so this is uh, broadly the dependency migration assistant tool that we have uh, our next step would be to automatically make uh, this change in the code which as i said involves ast rewrite and uh, also generate uh, examine the other kind of uh, uh, fixes where the fix effort is medium or high uh, so uh, thank you for uh, uh, thank you for your